Good morning, um, dear Sangha. Uh, today is uh, June the 8th, the year 2006, and we are in the Tu Nghiêm Loving Kindness Temple of uh, New Hamlet during our 21-day retreat, the breath of the Buddha. Yesterday we spoke of uh, of impermanence, of uh, non-desire, and today we um, we speak of uh, throwing away, throwing away. Throwing away is a wonderful practice. Ob- mind object and perceptions. The first exercise. Uh, Uh, contemplating impermanence. I breathe in. <coughs> contemplating uh, impermanence, I breathe out. Quang vô thường. The 14. Contemplating uh, throwing, throwing away. <coughs> I breathe in, I breathe out. The fifth, uh, non desire. And the sixteen, cessation. In the Pali Canon, this is also the 13th, but the 14th is uh, non-desire. And uh, 15 is uh, throwing away, and the 16 is uh, cessation. It uh, it is interesting to note that uh, in the Chinese uh, version, the practice of throwing away is uh, is the one that follows right uh, after impermanence. And the question you might like to ask is to throwing throwing away what? What is to be thrown away? We are in the field of uh, perception. And we have learned that wrong perceptions are the ground of all afflictions. Fear, anger, discrimination, despair, All these kind of uh, afflictions are born from wrong perceptions. So we know, it's easy to know that throwing away here means to throw away wrong perceptions, ideas, notions that are at the base of our, uh, our suffering. 
it is the most important practice in uh, uh, Buddhist meditation. You have an idea, and you entertain that idea for a long time, and you continue to suffer. Suppose a country entertained the idea, an idea about uh, what is the best way to, uh, to bring the country, to, uh, to make the country into a superpower. And that is a collective idea of the, of the, the country. A certain kind of uh, ideology that you embrace, and you think that is the only way to to make your 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 nation into the most powerful nation. <coughs> of course, we have uh, individual idea of uh, what uh, should be our uh, happiness. Every one of us has entertained an idea about happiness. It may be that because of that idea of, happy, of happiness, but we have never been happy. So it's very important to throw away that notion of happiness, that idea of happiness that we, that we have entertained. So a nation is a community of people, and they may entertain together one idea, one ideology. Each political party, the Socialist Party, uh, for instance, each, uh, each party entertain an idea. And we might be caught in that idea. We never succeed in into realizing uh, uh, our uh, our aim. So an ideology may be may be a trap. That young your nation may be caught in it during sixty, seventy years, and during that time. Uh, you create a lot of suffering. Those who are not, do not agree, agree with that ideology, you put them in psychiatric hospitals. And the woman, when you release that idea, happiness begins to be possible. So throwing away is very important. And it takes insight, it takes courage in order to throw away an idea. If we have suffered, that may be because we have entertained one idea we are not able to release. So throwing away is the word. It's very strong. It's not just letting go. The Sanskrit, the Pali term is throwing away in a very strong way. And the Vietnamese uh, uh, meditation master Tang Hoi, he also used the word uh, phong khí, phong throw away, phong khí. Tang Hoi is the first uh, teacher of meditation in Vietnam. He lived in the beginning, uh, in, the, in the first half of the third century. <coughs> we have a book uh, uh, written on uh, his life and his teaching. He is considered to be the uh, first uh, teacher of meditation in Vietnam and also in China because he went to China uh, during the first half of the third century. And in China at that time, there was no Buddhist monk. It was him who, who ordained the first Buddhist monks in China. He, uh, he used the word phong, phong, to throw, 
ครับยูไม่ have studied the Diamond Sutra the Diamond Sutra um, advise us to throw away four notions and the first notion is the notion of self it is by intensive training that you can throw away the notion of self if uh, a couple Uh, know how to uh, live uh, in the spirit of non-self. There will be no, no difficulty, no anger, no discrimination, no despair, because uh, they have realized the truth of non-self. If a father and son, mother and daughter, uh, have the insight of no, non, no self. They look at each other as uh, interbeing, and then they there will be no problem. If the north and the south realize that they are, they inter are, and then the, there will be no problem. They will be like uh, brothers and sisters. There is uh, the idea that I am this body. This body is me. Uh, this body is mine, belong to me. I am this body. Uh, this body belong to me. And this is uh, a notion that does not correspond to reality. When you pronounce the word I am, we pronounce it uh, on the ground of that notion, I am. And uh, still people do not believe very much in that statement. That is why they try to uh, To, uh, to justify it with a kind of uh, argument. Like uh, René Descartes, in order to demonstrate that I am is a reality, he said, I think, therefore I am. I am. I remember one day I saw a cartoon uh, picturing the cat touching a horse. And he declared, I think that I, therefore I am. And the horse asked back, you are what? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question. <laughs> If you can answer, what you are, and then you may have a better uh, idea that is closer to reality. <coughs> when we look deeply, when the father looked deeply at, his, at his himself, when the son looked deeply at uh, his father, if they look like that, they see that they inter are. The father is at the same time the son, and the son is at the same time the father. So a better statement is, I inter am. I inter am. It's closer to the truth in the light of, uh, of uh, inter interconnectedness, in the light of uh, 
interbeing in the light of um, um, interdependent uh, origination. Uh, we see that uh, the rose is made only of non-rose elements. We see that Buddhism is made only of non-Buddhist elements. So we are free. When you are able to see that Buddhism is made of non-Buddhist elements, you have a lot of uh, tolerance, you have a lot of uh, openness, and you follow the line of inclusiveness. There is no religious war, there is no discrimination, and you are truly Buddhist, because you have that, you, 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 you are based on that uh, right view. And that I view is uh, there is no self. There is no uh, separate entity called self. So I into M is closer to the truth. And we know that. I am like this because you are like that. And in the, the scripture, it is written, this is because that is. And this is a statement about interbeing. If you are not there, well, I cannot be here. <coughs> so it's very important to <coughs> throw away the notion I am the notion self, because it does not reflect the truth. And by looking deeply into the nature of reality, you are capable of throwing away that notion of I am. The second notion that the Diamond Sutra advises us to throw away is the notion man, human, human, human being. And this is not something too difficult. When we look into the human being, we see human ancestors, we see animal ancestors, we see vegetable ancestors, we see mineral ancestors. And we see that the human is made of the non-human elements. We see that we are at the same time a rock, a river, a cloud, a squirrel, a rose. And if we take away all the non-human elements, the human being is no longer there. And this is, uh, this is the deepest teaching on, uh, on uh, a deep ecology in order to protect the human being you have to protect elements that are not human. Because these elements are our ancestors. And if we destroy our ancestors, there's no way that we can be there. That is why discrimination between man and nature, that is a wrong view. You have, see, you have to see you as nature, one with nature. <coughs> And you have uh, to respect life in all its form. And that, that, that is why harmony, uh, respect of life is possible. So throw away the idea that human is the boss, the man is the boss, man can do anything uh, to nature. And the key is uh, contemplation on uh, impermanence of no self. (coughs) 
the first is the notion of self to be thrown away. The second is the notion of man. With that kind of uh, liberation, we become uh, less proud, less arrogant as a species. We know that uh, we have to respect other species. We have to protect them in order for us to have a chance. And that is why we said that Diamond Sutra is the oldest text on deep ecology. The third uh, uh, notion is the notion of uh, uh, living beings. When we, when, we, when we pronounce the word living beings, we want to distinguish living beings with non-living beings. So we mean uh, animal, the animal, animals, humans and animals. But we know very well that uh, looking deeply into living beings, we see elements that can be called, could be called non-living beings, the vegetal, <coughs> the minerals. And looking deeply, we can see that vegetables and minerals, they are alive also. So there's no real frontier. frontier separating um, human beings and non-human beings. We have the notion of, uh, of uh, matière inerte, la matière inerte. But if you look deeply into that notion that uh, matter is something without soul, without um, life, we see that is not true. First of all, uh, matter is the object of our, uh, of our perception. And for a long time, we have believed that matter exists as uh, a separate entity. And matter is something that does not move. But now, uh, as science advances, we see that matter is not uh, static, immobile, like we have thought. In fact, uh, the atoms, the atoms, they move a lot. They are very alive. <coughs> and looking more deeply, we see a lot of our mind in it. And we are not sure that they are there like the way we have uh, imagined. So the distinction between living being and non-living living beings disappear, removed after meditation. No longer any discrimination. <coughs> and the fourth uh, notion to be thrown away is the notion of lifespan. We believe that uh, there is uh, time, the course of time, and we are born at one point of time. Our birth begins here, and we, and we shall die at another point of time, death. So our life only begins here and ends here, lifespan. And most of us believe 
believe that. I only spend 70, 80, 90, or 100 years on this planet. After that, I began to believe like that. But as we um, look deeply, we see that uh, this is a notion, a wrong perception. Birth is a notion, and death is also a notion. It's not reality. The other day we spoke of uh, the deathlessness of a cloud. A cloud can never die. It can only become uh, rain or snow, etc. In our mind, to die means from something you become nothing. From someone, you become no one. And if you look deeply, you don't see anything like that. A cloud can never die. When you burn a piece of paper, that piece of paper is transformed into smoke, heat, ash. The piece of paper cannot be reduced to nothingness. So the idea of annihilation is just an idea. You cannot annihilate anything. <coughs> and if we look uh, deeply, we see that uh, the nature of the cloud is also the nature of no birth. Because in our mind, to be born is from nothing, you become something. From no one, you suddenly become someone. The cloud does not come from nothing. It has come from the water, in the river, in the ocean. It has come from uh, the sunshine, the heat. And we know that uh, the birth of a cloud is a poetic um, image. It is a new manifestation. Uh, before being a cloud, the cloud had been, has been many, many, many other things. So to say that uh, from here to here is being, and from here back is non-being. And from here on is non-being. So we believe that from non-being we become being, and from being we become non-being. And that is a notion to be thrown away. <laughs> thrown away. Our true nature is nature of no birth and no death. Birth and death are notions that cannot be applied to reality. Because nothing can be born from nothing. And nothing can become nothing at all. And this, uh, this uh, meditation, this practice of looking deeply, will bring about insight. They will dissipate our fear, our, our despair. So that is the four notions, four basic notions that are at the foundation of our fear, our discrimination, our suffering. And that is why the Diamond Sutra advi advise us to practice looking deeply so that we can throw them away. So the first uh, uh, notion to be thrown away is uh, the notion of uh, self. 
สัตกยาดริสติทั้งเกียงดูวิวดัตดิสบอดี้อิสมีดิสบอดี้บิลลองทูมีไอเอ็มดิสบอดี้ดิสบอดี้อิสมีดัสกันนะดัสกันนูชันทูบีทรูนเวย์เอสเดอะเพียสออฟเอ็กซ์ตรีมส์โอลเบียงเกียงลายกับเบิร์ธและเดธคัมมิงและโกิง Same, sameness, uh, otherness, and otherness. <coughs> being and non-being. Eternity, eternalism. And uh, annihilation. There are those of us, there are those of us who believe in an immortal soul, and after the disintegration of this body, that immortal soul continues to live on, does not change. In Buddhism, we speak of uh, consciousness in terms of uh, feelings, perceptions, mental formations, and consciousness. And we know that everything is changing. This is rather this is a this is a flow. This is a process rather than a thing and something solid. And we don't see anything as permanent, because impermanence is uh, the object of our uh, of our uh, looking deeply. Nothing is impermanent. So the notion that there is an immortal soul that remains itself forever and ever is a wrong view called eternalism. t h ư n g kiến, t h ư n g kiến. The view of uh, eternalism and the opposite view, the other extreme is d u a n k i n annihilation, uh, something may disappear forever. After we die, nothing is left. Absolutely nothing is left. That is another extreme. That is a wrong view. And we we should not be caught in one extreme or another extreme. When uh, Lavoisier <coughs> looked deeply at uh, matter and energy, he uh, he was able to see that nothing is born, nothing dies. 
รียนสกรีเรียนสแปรและ the death statement of his เรียนสกรีเรียนสแปร coincide with the, what we read in the heart sutra บิกเส้นบิกเหยียก no birth and no death so birth and death are also another couple another pair of extremes and looking deeply uh, we are we will be able to throw away the notion of birth and death you have used the the image of a cloud in order to to practice looking deeply anything like a rose a squirrel uh, a river is anything is like that the nature of is the nature of no birth and no death The, uh, the demonstration of uh, coming and going. When, when we invite uh, the flame to manifest, you might like to ask the flame, uh, Dear little flame, where have you come from? And when the flame is uh, no longer there, you may like to ask the flame, Dear little flame, where have you gone? But we have the notion of coming and going. <laughs> Uh, to meditate means to listen deeply to the flame after having asked the question dear flame where have you been where have you come from dear flame where have you gone <coughs> and looking deeply practicing meditation you will hear the voice of the flame telling you Dear Thay, dear Sangha, I have come from nowhere. I have not come from the south, from the north, from the east, from the west. When conditions come together, I manifest. This is not birth. This is a manifestation. <coughs> And we know that uh, the flame is right. Her nature is the nature of uh, no coming. When conditions come together and then she manifests, she does not come, she has not come from any directions. So coming is a notion. Going is another notion. Dear little flame, where have you gone? And you listen to the flame, and you hear, Dear Thay, dear Sangha, I have gone nowhere. I have not gone to the south, neither to the north. When conditions are no longer sufficient, I seize my manifestation. My nature is no going, no coming, no going. So the na- The, the notion of coming and, no, and going also are notions to be thrown away. When, uh, a, uh, when a being that is so dear to us c e a s e to manifest in a way she used to, we want to ask, beloved one, where are you now? Where have you gone? And if you listen Carefully, she will tell you that she has not gone anywhere. She is still there somehow, 
And if you have uh, the eyes of a Buddha, the eyes of a practitioner, you can still recognize her in her new manifestations because nothing is lo lost. Rien ne se When you, when you open the album, family album, you may see yourself, the image of yourself when you were five years old. Now you are 30 or 40. And you may like to ask, uh, am I the same with that little girl? Am I the same person with that little boy? And the good answer is that, uh, well, I am neither the same with that boy, little boy, but I am not a different uh, person either. Several years ago in a retreat, uh, uh, in northern Germany, we uh, marry a couple. Um, and the next morning, uh, the couple was asked to come, to come up to, uh, to report on us uh, on the teaching of uh, no coming, no going, neither the same nor a different one. And uh, the young man looked at her bride and asked this question, Darling, are you the same person I married yesterday or are you a different one? <laughs> because things are impermanent, you know. <laughs> Nothing can remain the same in two consecutive days. So when you love, you worry a little bit. <laughs> You worry that uh, the other person may no longer love you. Yeah, so you want to be assured all the time that she still loves you. So since the day before, they have le heard about impermanence. They have agreed that things are impermanent and people also, the mind is impermanent. So there is a ground for the young husband to ask, his wife, that question, Darling, are you the same person I married yesterday? And the lady looked at him, the young lady looked at him smiling and said, Don't worry, my dear. Although I am not exactly the same person you married yesterday, but I am not a different person either. <laughs> that is the truth. So the notion of sameness should be thrown away. The notion of otherness should be thrown away. Because if we have succeeded in the contemplation of impermanence, we cannot entertain the notion of eternity, eternalism. And that is why uh, we can stay on the middle path. On the middle path means you are free from extremes, from notions, from pair of opposites. Pair of opposites. Now let us try to look uh, 